Hi everyone, I'm John from GGS Gamer and I recently spoke to Vufu Studios Creative Director Sean Reid and their Marketing and PR Manager Sean Walsh about the Switch release of Mantis Burn Racing which is coming out soon. What did the port over to the Switch allow you to actually play around with? Did it allow you to kind of introduce any new features or kind of play around with any features that were already in the game? In terms of new features, um, obviously you can play the game in a completely different way. Obviously you can play it on the move now, which is the, you know, joined on the key strips of the Switch. It's portable, it's handheld, it really suits that type of top-down top down style arcade gameplay. Um, in terms of things we've added, sort of which you wouldn't maybe expect straight across, we've got a, um, what we call like a, t a cross table mode, where we'll show you, you can play two player local split screen racing with, with the Joy Cons or with the controllers. You can, so play, you can play it. You can play opposite ends so of the. You play it like that split on screen. a desktop. Okay, so, so like your a, screen would be. So facing you, you and Sean's would be facing him. So you've actually been able to keep local multiplayer in the game then as yes, well then? Four yeah. play four players. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I mean the game is, as I was explaining a while ago, it, it is the sort of best version of the game. It's got all the features of the console versions and more. Those more being, you know, the, the cross table play, so two player local split screen. You can use a wheel, so you can use the little peripheral, it works. You can use um, the whole console. And what we've done is yeah. we've uh, we've we've set the horizon. Um, so that the screen stays still while you're steering like that. So, so you can actually uh, tilt the, the, you can the entire the, you thing. Can use yeah. this as a steering wheel itself. Um, um, what else have we done? Those things are really cool and really quirky. Um, obviously, all the DLCs in there. What else is, is kind of you wouldn't expect diff completely different out of the console? We've done you? the. Uh, we're supporting the Wi-Fi that obviously yep. the Switch provides, so you can play eight-player local cross Wi-Fi. Oh, if great. You, so if you've got seven friends with <laughs> all the switches. Switch. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Without yeah. without an internet connection, obviously, so you can play. Locally, um, local multiplayer mode, I guess, Wi-Fi mode for up to eight players. The tilt, the split screen, the wheel, plus all the content, as we said, all the DLC packs are in here, all the fixes, all the updates. Um, it is, a, it, it is it, a definitive version. So, yeah, it's a really so. good, really great, it's a great game on console, but it's, it's, it's kind of the definitive game on, on Switch. Great. Okay, then. Um, obviously, there's a lot of positives about bringing it over to Switch as well, but... Uh, Sean, you already kind of touched on a few issues that you had on porting it over. Yeah. So, would you mind just going into that in a bit more detail? Yeah, sure. So, obviously, the, the game was originally. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you well, you might be aware that we were the first game to support true native 4K on the PlayStation Pro. We've just um, finalised that for the uh, Xbox One X. That's 60 frames a second, 4K, split screen. Um, so, as you imagine, even though people look at the game and think, oh, it's a top-down racer, we were actually pushing the current cream-of-the-crop software uh, hardware to the limit. Um, so, to, to, to compact all that down to, to get the same experience on the Switch was more of a challenge than, than we expected, but um, we've got some clever guys back in the studio, so we've been, uh, we've, we haven't reduced the graphic quality in any way, so we haven't, we haven't because that would have actually been a far, far bigger job. That basically the artists would have had to redo the background. So it's been all, it's been all on the software guys. So just had an find... image of a really pissed off artist. Exactly. Like, oh. No, no, no. They, no, they wouldn't <laughs> be doing that. So we've, we've had to uh, get the software guys to write better algorithms <laughs> to, to make it basically run faster. So uh, yeah, and like I say, we're pretty much there now. Um, yeah, we're, we're hopefully within. The next few weeks, going to be pushing it towards Nintendo. Great, and then you obviously touched on the um, the the frame rate kind of mm. stuff with the with the uh, switch. So, was, were you saying that you could have sixty right. frames seconds in so, a variable state? Yeah, so we'll be launching with an option in the settings um, that allows you to fix it to thirty, and that obviously that's completely stable, rock solid thirty. And to be honest with you, we we demoed it at the because I was a little bit concerned that you know the because I'm doing all the gameplay design and everything, and I was always constantly, it's got to be 60, it's got to be 60, but it actually plays really well at 30, and we, we showed it at the EGX for four days straight, and had very, very few comments about the frame rate running at 30. But at the same time, we wanted to keep pushing, pushing, pushing to hit that 60, so what we're doing is we're going to have a, a fixed 30 frames rate, uh, 30 frames per second, and then we're going to have a, what we're calling variable. Now, it was variable, a few weeks ago, but it's actually getting more and more to a, a completely stable 60. It's just the odd area, but it doesn't impact gameplay really at all. Cool. So. And then, sorry, I just I have to ask this because frame rate has really become an issue only, only after over the like 
last two, three years, I'd say. Especially with Switch owners, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, it was 30 frames per second. People didn't really notice the difference no. on gameplay. So, do you think, actually, do you think there is an issue with frame rates in the industry now? Do you think fans are kind of, like, saying that everything needs to be 60 without really seeing the difference? It, it's very dependent on the game. Um, if Generally, if you're playing a fast-paced game, it will feel better to play at 60 because your input is immediate. It's not necessarily just what it looks like. It's actually the feel of the game yeah. as well. Um, but, in my opinion, and I play an awful lot of games, I would say a, a steady, solid 30 frames a second is better than a fluctuating frame rate, which can will play havoc with gameplay yeah. because... It can affect the physics. You can be turning a corner, and if it's drifting between thirty and and and, lo- and sixty and lower, it can actually affect the single turn. So it is better to obviously to all it always have a solid frame rate, whether that be thirty or sixty. But in my personal opinion, it's, it's if, if a game's running at sixty, so obviously first person shooters generally tend to play better in because it's very fast paced. But yeah. if you're playing like a you know a slow paced adventure game, then it's definitely not as important. I will. <laughs> I think I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just kind of want to open it up a little bit because it's uh, Mantis obviously released nearly a year ago, right? Yes. Um, since then, it's been a year actually that surprised me. We've seen a lot of top down races kind of be introduced <laughs> back into mainstream gaming. I'm thinking we've, we've GTA. Bought, yeah. We've bought that the trend. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to ask. So yeah. obviously, we had like GTA's top down races like within the online mode. I think Forza Horizon bought it out as DS- DLC as well. Micro Machines obviously. Kind of did Forza have a top down? I think so. I think so. The thing they brought it back as even Forza were copying this. Was it Forza? It might have been someone else. I do remember though that it got bought. There's been micro machines. What else? Yeah, tabletop racing. Yeah, come out recently, hasn't it? Other games, really. No, but what I was going to say is, so (laughs) were you quite happy to see this return to top down races, or did you kind of see it as a? Why not? If it, if it means more appetite for our game, then absolutely. We you know we want to be we want our game to sell, but we're, we're more than happy to uh, you know be part of a, if there is any kind of resurgence in this or added interest or consumer demand for these type of games. It definitely stirs people's sort of nostalgia. You know, for for the for the older sort of generation of players, they're definitely oh that reminds me of this, it reminds me of that. You know, the reaction on Switch has been amazing. You know, we obviously we track all the comments and the, even your YouTubes and your your interviews and all kinds of uh, you know online. Conversations we're sort of tapping into, and, and the sentiment's really positive on Switch, more so than it has been on console. And I think there's that heritage of top-down racing games, more perhaps more so on um, Nintendo games in the past. So people are you definitely get that. Oh, it reminds me of this, reminds me of that. And then the, the sort of newer generation who might not remember know those games just see it as a fun game anyway. And they you know they maybe maybe um, sort of pair dads are getting it for their for their household and kids are playing it. So I think on top of that as well that. But- Generally, Switch owners, while the, while the console has been incredibly successful at this moment in time, when you speak to Switch owners, I mean, I spoke to an awful lot of the, the EGX a few weeks ago, and they were saying, we just want games. We just want quality games to play on it. And uh, so, and they said, this, you know, this is perfect. So, we've got. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, quite it's fine. High, high yeah, hopes. Absolutely fine to the earth. If the genre makes a resurgence and we can bring our game to more people, then absolutely fine. Great. And then, Sean, sorry, just because I was hoping you'd actually bring up a sense of nostalgia, because I wanted to kind of open up to that and just kind of get what you guys thought about it, because I, I would say that over the last year or so as well, we've seen a massive kind of resurgence in side-scrolling beat-em-ups, a lot of games that we'd have grown up playing as well. 3D, so, 3D platformers? Oh, bloody hell, yeah. 3D platformers, I hate them so much. No, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell Play Sonic. <laughs> yeah. But I was going to say, do you think that's kind of... Is that a good thing for the games industry, or is it? Kind is this of a good time back? to tell you I was a lead designer on Banjo Kazooie? Were you really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. I no, did no, not know that. Yeah, well, no, don't no, I no, feel no, like no, a twat? No, 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 no. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, there is. I would say. Sorry, do you say it's a good time, or do you? Think do you think it's a it's a good thing to see this kind of resurgence in nostalgia gaming, or do you think it's well, some a step it back? Brings something new. I think if it's you know. Nostalgia for nostalgia's sake doesn't, in any form of art for me, doesn't really inspire me. But if it, if it's bringing something new and something to, even if it's just you know similar games to a new generation, then or adding something different, and then yeah, why not? I mean, you see it in music, you see it in film, you see it in all forms of art forms. So why not games? I mean, so gaming quite. is is you know for you know sort of my generation as well. When I was 
playing Spectrum back in the day, I've still got that nostalgia of gaming, and that's my. They're, they're some of my favourite games, you know, the really sort of lo fi Spectrum games. I've, I've spent days, weeks playing, you know, really sort of what are actually really crappy games, really. <laughs> but so much fun, you know. So, um, so yeah, I think if. if, if I, I think nostalgia is fine as long as it's. From our point of view, we want to, you know, we want to create good games, whether it's nostalgic or not. I mean, you know, as the point of Mantis Burn Racing is, it's a modern racer. It's not. It might remind people of certain things, but it's actually a very modern racer. Yeah. It could only have been made recently, even though it's it hogs back to you know older generations, older games. Of course, it does, but it couldn't look like that. It couldn't play like that twenty years ago. So, so it is. We've definitely added something new. And that was the whole point of the game. So. Um, Style is great if you if you can you know, can use it as a, all kinds of you know marketing tool, but it has to has it has to have some positive spin on it. I think so. Mm-hmm. We've definitely that's what we've done with Mantis. We always we always get so many people coming up saying, "Oh wow, I used to play Mashed or yeah. uh, uh, all those top down." You know, obviously Micro Machines. I mean, we used to play Micro Machines constantly, and that's it's that one more go, but getting that competitive feel. You know, with your mates and sitting on the same. That's why we we wanted. The, the local player um, play, you know, that intense yeah. competition of sitting on the same set and like kind of yeah. punching each other at the end. But, yeah, because um, I do think that it's something that's been lost there with online. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I do like online multiplayer, but it is, they're my favourite memories yeah. as well, like sitting Absolutely. with my mates or my brothers and playing yeah, you know, you micro can... machines or anything like that and just getting really pissed off. By yeah, you can't lose your rag with somebody it's quite so well if they're on the other <laughs> end of a, a landline and <laughs> yeah. sitting next to you. Which I think is yeah. why our game suits the Switch as well, because the Nintendo social gaming, you know, Everybody around the same console, the, the, you know, harking back to the Wii and stuff. This is the, the Switch has still got that strength, obviously, and our game really can really thrive. It works online, obviously, online's great, but but the local co op is, I think, like you say, has been really forgotten a little bit. And everybody we've mentioned over the last 12 months, however long it's been, about local split screen, like, oh wow, you don't see many games of that anymore. But think, you know, that's what we wanted to call us, bring back a little bit. Nintendo have always been big evangelists of getting people to play together as well, so. Hopefully those two kind of collide and yeah. work out all right. So. And then just one last question, guys, because yeah. you have been really nice to me with your time anyway. <laughs> um, obviously, you're coming towards the end. I think you're in like the kind of final part now of development, really, aren't you? It's basically ready to go. Yeah. So what are you playing in the middle? Like, are you looking forward to kind of getting back and actually playing something other than Mantis for a little while? And if so, what are you going to be playing? Oh, all right. Okay, personally. Personally. Mm. Right, so... I'm desperately trying to finish Mass Effect. I've been playing it for about four months. I don't get enough time, and it literally it's the game that'll never end. <laughs> um, well, then I've just recently bought Destiny. Uh, I was quite a big Destiny fan, but I haven't even hardly got time to touch that. But other than that, I've, I've... games I, re- I've, I really got into the uh, <laughs> the walking. I don't know if it's my uh, sign of my age. The walking simulator genre. Yeah, it's so good, isn't it? So I've, I've played Firewatch and gone home and everyone's gone to the Rapture. I just literally went blasted them all. I bought them all from <laughs> PSN and played them all. And I really got it. Firewatch, as far as I'm concerned, is genius. I wish I'd have designed it. So, uh, yeah. And Sean, you playing anything good at the moment? Um, I tend to play games. I turn my PS4 and play with my four-year-old son and he's really into Star Wars. So we play, we play, um... Lego? No, not Lego. Oh, the Empire? Battlefront, the new Star Wars we're looking forward oh, to. Right. I play that with him. Uh, playing the Cars 3, driven to win games. So my gaming's around my, my four-year-old at <laughs> the minute. When I can play it myself, I play our games, I play Mantis. Um, I'm really looking forward to the new Red Dead. Yes, yeah. I play, well. I play, I play like Football Manager and FIFA and stuff. But, but yeah, I guess Star Wars and Red Dead are the two big ones for me, because I, I love Star Wars myself and my son kind of thinks he's playing it when I give him a controller, so he's getting into that, and Red Dead for me, I think. So that was Vufu Studios creative director Sean Reed and their PR and marketing manager Sean Walsh speaking about the Switch release of Mantis Burn Racing. We don't know exactly when it's coming up for Switch, but it's already up for PS4, Xbox and PC. If you've enjoyed this, please do leave a like and uh, subscribe if you can. We've also got daily news, interviews and reviews on our website ggsgamer.com and you can also follow us on Twitter at ggsgamer. Thanks everyone, bye.